You see like teeth on your uh, there. Yeah, teeth. Here. Yes, oh, good. Exactly. oh, sorry, we didn't see you there. Onyx Wrestling fans, so happy to see you back for this. We, uh, I, it, it's just it's so weird, you know, having Andrew and Mikey and myself, JBL here to talk about Ring of Honor for all of you here. Uh, the kind of go home show for uh, World's End, but not really at that point. But uh, before we do anything else, obviously we have to observe the code of honor. So gentlemen, your hands in. Good to see you. Good to be here. Uh, so again, yes, we're here to review ROH from the 28th of December of 2023, the last ROH of the year. And we're so excited to see you here. But remember, as we're going along here, anything we say, anything we talk about, drop a comment down in those wonderful places on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel. Get that alert bell so you can get all of our wonderful content. Eight to nine videos a week from us here at BC Wrestling Pod. It's crazy. And we're up to 123 subscribers. We love all of you. Tell your friends. Get them on there. Uh, but uh, you too. Uh, I love reviewing this. And I'm, I'm sorry we're missing Jesse tonight. Jesse did have a long holiday weekend. We wish him some sleep. He needs it. But this was a very uh, interesting in the way of like new faces, new storylines, things being built. This is kind of how what you want in your wrestling matches. It was this was a great episode of ROH. I felt like the show was light in some areas, but positive. Like I, there's little like new sprinklings of directions that we're going and buildings on stories that we've just started to see that I'm intrigued. I'm excited to see where we're going, especially with this new year. So it just feels like it's a really good place for things to start and Ring of Honor is in a good place to get new things started. I'm thoroughly excited about everything we good. And look at that. This was really an hour episode, which was also a nice change of pace <laughs> instead of so two great. and a half. And look at that. Take note, wrestling companies. We had seven matches in an hour. So I mean... I'm not going to complain. And seven matches that flowed. Seven matches yes. that brought in things. And honestly, you got too excited for what's going on here, including we start the night off. I'm going to skip over the promo that, that went over what happened at uh, all the other stuff uh, for us here mm-hmm. because we're going into Nyla Rose taking on Alejandra Lyon in the first squash match of the night. Mm-hmm. But again, they're using Nyla Rose on TV. She's mm-hmm. really becoming an ROH regular and getting yep. to like flex her chops here. I'm, I was excited for this. This was awesome. I... I really enjoy what they're doing, how they're giving Nyla squash matches because it's, it's entertaining still. It doesn't just feel like, Oh, great. It's the same thing over and over again. And I think part of that is like, we've talked about of ROH being really good of giving their opponents in squash matches a chance to do a, you know, a chance to shine a little bit. So this was great. It was a lot of fun and it was good to see Nyla get, you know, when she's at three and oh now. So yeah, I would love for her to be, you know, one of the contenders in the women's division. It'd be awesome. She's a great addition. Very much. So I really love Nyla Rose. I am a big fan of, you know, Nyla so much inside the ring and outside of the ring as well. <laughs> I thought this was a fun opener match in terms of, yes, giving Nyla another win. So now she's 3-0, and oh, which according to the rules set by Ian Riccoboni and Caprice Coleman, which... <laughs> I did not know this. I don't know if that's true or not, but if that is, it's kind of cool that if Nyla wins two more matches, Nyla can pick a championship match of their choice, which right now is against Athena, which I'm not going to complain about. Mm -hmm. Nope. But this was a fun match. I'm happy to see Nyla back on television, like I've said in the multiple reviews we've done in the last couple of weeks for Ring of Honor. And I think Nyla just fits we're perfectly here in Ring of Honor too. Yeah, we've we've needed one of those powerhouse uh, women mm-hmm. in the women's division, other than Rachel Ellering or a couple others that could take on some folks. And now you've got Taya Valkyrie, you've got Nyla Rose, you've got Rachel Ellering. You have those like dynamic shifts you can play against Akira Hogan or a Lady Frost or somebody else, Mercedes Martinez or Diamante, anybody mm-hmm. at that point, because you're playing those styles off. Yeah. And you're right on this. Also, Nyla fits it so well in that she is finally getting a chance to shine where she's having fun and you can tell like stealing the cowboy hat at the end and she put it on and she's celebrating her win was just, just classic her. Just let the shades of her goofy personality shine yeah. through between the powerhouse thrashing she's going to give. And I'm, I'm sold. It is. So we move on from there uh, to a debut in ROH. Uh, someone who definitely uh, is, uh, this is nepotism at its best, as we were told <laughs> on there, uh, because we had pretty Peter Avalon come out, who I love that he's back. I'm sad that he is now jobber to the stars, but I'm glad he's back. Love him so much. Taking on Zach Knight, his brother, who Ian and, and Caprice got over really a, a lot easily there. I talked about his time in Japan, how he's like, you know, I had an older brother once and here's the, and like made it all kind of work together. And damn, Zach Knight was moving in this match. I wanted to hate him. I was like, all right, Tony or whoever, I see what you're doing. 
But then Zach shut me up immediately because within the first three minutes, he proved me wrong. And what sold me on him, and now I kind of like him, is when Peter threw him out of the ring. And then it literally looked like someone hit rewind because it just looked so smooth the way he jumped back in like reversed himself and came back into the ring. I was like, all right, I'm sold. You're, you're one of my favorites now. <laughs> like Always. so good. It's, you know, a little rougher. So it was kind of cool to see that against uh, Peter Avalon. And I think it gave Peter Avalon a chance to shine too. Cause it showed that like he could go against someone like that. And that splash that he hit when he almost just basically ran up the ropes and then just straight off dived, no hesitation whatsoever. I thought the ending with Zack Knight, the way he uh, kind of capitalized on that ending was super brutal. It looked vicious uh and i absolutely love in ring of honor when the victor shakes the hand of the knocked out opponent it's so perfect it's so so perfect i love it. we got that a couple times tonight actually yeah, there were a yeah. couple of those ones. Oh, yeah, overall a great debut and it wasn't a squatch overall like it yeah. was very fun to see but you got the uh the entrances which were fun but i love seeing pretty peter avalon and he can he can put pretty much anybody over at this point it's very nice ring of honor when did you get so much better with your video packages Mm -hmm. because we got all the women involved in this little bit of a tournament for the new ROH TV championship, getting their say, getting to hear people who have not had mic time, get some uh, preset mic time. I was overjoyed at this. And this is, you know, third in the night, like right there set up to go. Did you learn anything new about any of the performers that you hadn't done before? Or are you more excited that they're involved now? Like, how did you take the package? I quite nicely, actually. It felt natural. So, uh, I, I really enjoyed this. I liked how it was like color coded to everyone's uh, tastes. And it it was fun to see their approaches and get to see little snippets of their personalities. Yeah. I didn't get any like new new impressions of anyone in this but it was nice to get kind of reminded of like oh yeah this is the ring of honor like top women's division here and we're gonna get to see these people compete against each other for the tv title it's awesome and you know i think there's some good names in there to really give it some elevation and you know this tournament should be the ring of honor women's version of the continental classic that we just got like we should have some really good solid matches to help build up this new title for whoever ends up holding the title billy Starks. so i think that uh, i think this was awesome it was really good keep doing this kind of stuff because it builds up those stars like that's what we need to see we need to get that impression from people mm-hmm. what i really yeah. yeah what i really appreciated about this is that from this first crop of women that got introduced to this i think these are definitely the right women to pick to put in this uh tournament given the fact that we've talked about this last week too when we were t- introduced the fact that there's going to be a new women's title on ring of honor i'm in the same boat with andrew it's not so much that we learned anything new from the five that you know talked and got little video packages but i am excited and you know what we got five women in the span of two minutes to do a segment that flow together very well they were given the chance to just talk obviously i'm going to be loving kiara the most because that's my home girl but you know what? I got to say, the surprise standout for me in a good way is le- le- learning a little bit more about Lady Frost winning a whole uh-huh. tournament in Mexico that I did not know about, which is awesome, given the fact that, you know, she's one of our older women's wrestlers because uh-huh. she's what in her mid 30s, which I love. But I got to say, I love seeing Rachel Ellering talk. I miss that portion of her, you know, uh-huh. just herself. I was like, I forgot how good she is on the mic when it's just her. Oh, like, she good. Takes after- her dad so hard you can hear it on that one like it's just there man i'm excited for rachel and you know what i'm with the tease of what we got in another company is certain <laughs> her dad's going to be making a reappearance in wwe in smackdown i am super excited but i'm yeah. really pumped for this match and i actually love that they picked billy to end this out because it was mm-hmm. just short sweet to, to the point but i'm here for this tournament oh, yeah. man she carried through the whole segment too because she goes into uh-huh. the next one but the other thing i'm loving to see is if we do get as much as we do the other women next week maybe talking their end of it uh-huh. as well we come to a survival of the fittest match like we did for the men i would be over the moon to see that somewhere because you have yeah. so many good styles in there also bringing up the thing about lady frost with that tournament in mexico that kind of set the tone for me later in the night seeing as who she was taking on in that uh triple uh the trio tag match there yeah but we'll get to that when we get to that uh as for billy starks she ends that segment uh, promo and then it, there's an emergency meme you know that's that's set up here and athena's hosting it she's got billy she's got lexi they're running down everything going on here and billy gets the floor and just like i'm gonna take out every hussy that is in this division be on the lookout for me so I, happy 
I think I feel like Billy Starks has become the so it's like when there's like a group of people that especially a group of dudes that like you know they get into trouble get into fights stuff like that you know you have your traditional like hard looking fighters that you know are gonna like fight some people and everything but then there's sometimes there's that dude that's just the happiest friendliest person but just smashes people and i feel like that's billy who billy has become mm. she's happy friendly and all that stuff but as soon as she needs to go she goes and she goes hard and i think we get to see more of that later in the night but like i feel like that's where billy has come to and it's a great mix with Athena because and you've got a pair of them now that will just beat the crap out of anybody who's in front of them, but they approach it in a very different way. It was awesome. It's good to see all that stuff. And of course, the- Lexi is just the best. Wait, wait, wait. One You're of not the things, you know, one of the things that I truly appreciate is that over the last year and post final battle, even though it's really been two weeks, just even how Billy presents herself and what she wears is great because I'm like, her shirt is kind of like bloodstained a little bit. Side note, I want that Sailor Moon inspired Billy Stark shirt <laughs> like that. I was like, Ring of Honor shop. Do you have that in stock? Because I really, really, I want it Pro so Wrestling bad. Tees has it if you want it. Yes. Okay. Well, that I'm putting that on my list of things that I'm going to get. <laughs> but again, the progression of not just character wise and the promo skills that Billy has, but yeah. the small little details is what I appreciate because we see her clothing is a little bit more grungier, I guess uh-huh. is the best way to put it. Like very more tie dye ripped shirts. Like even her ring gear is the subtlety and changes when we get to her match later. Those are the things that I appreciate when it comes to storytelling and wrestling. You don't have to do a full 180 degree turn in who they are as a character, but the small little details help the nuances and how they present themselves. And this is chef's kiss. This was beautiful. I'm so excited to see this trio just run rough shot through ROH to come the new year. I'm glad they're continuing it too, because we did have that story kind of wrap up a bit at final battle and it's still viable. This is how you continue to have great evolving storylines. And I can't wait to see where they go. We, we then, tr- oh, did you have something else, Andrew? Or? Hey, while we were talking about this, this just made me think of if they keep this running with the three of them, especially if they dominate these two now two women's titles in ring of honor i mean it's a little early early days dx from back in the day of just this like of like influential people that are just running over everybody else because they're a cohesive unit i just it was lexi china Uh, yeah i mean basically essentially oh my gosh if we ever finally get lexi in the ring in some capacity i will forever love this story even more so good. Uh, we transitioned from our favorite storyline there there to uh, the hometown boys. This was obviously filmed the week before because there was a couple of, of bounce arounds for this one. The wrong team won. I'm sorry. Uh, Brian Keith and the Von Erics. Uh, again, another thing they're promoting Iron Claw, taking on the Iron Savages and Jack Jameson. And yeah, the wrong team won because the Von Erics and Brian Keith won. Also, Jack Jameson is not good in the ring. <laughs> Stop making him wrestle. I'm going to take this one first because I was utterly disappointed in this match. And don't get me wrong. As we have seen from our final battle review, I am a huge fan of Brian Keith, but he was like non-existent in this match. It was it was depressing. I know we're in Von Eric country. I saw Iron Claw and I was just remembered of how depressed at first. I was like, okay, this is a civil match. And then the last two minutes, I'm like, this is a very clunky finish. Nothing connected. Somebody messed up somewhere because it was a travesty towards the end of this match. And it's unfortunate because I've grown to like the Von Eriks. I am unbiased. I am biased against Brian Keith as the bounty hunter, but man, Poor Iron Savages. Jack Jamison is not good in the ring. Why do we continue to ha- listen? If he's going to be in trios, just just not have him be in there. But the one thing that did make me laugh because I thought it was just so out of left field towards the beginning when Jack Jamison was doing the intro for them and the Iron Savages. But now it's just like, now I just want a t-shirt that says Titty City. I was like, what is this? It's coming. It's got to be coming. <laughs> Lord have mercy. That's the only thing that made me smile. But other than that, it was okay. But yeah, the last two two to three minutes of this match was very clunky. It was just somebody missed a cue, it looked like. And then there were also a couple times during the match. I know the Von Erics are very new, but you could see audibles being called. Like, I was like, I need you to do that. I was like, what is happening? This is weird. 
Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm going to start with the one good thing that I got out of this match. And I'm surprised this wasn't brought up already, but Boulder's ass shake to the camera when he was climbing was around the, the ring post. And he was like, oh, hey, camera. Hey. Like, it was just so Clap good. Those cheeks. Clap so, so good. All right, now everything else about the match. Oh, jeez. This was not the right team to put them against for to build up the Von Eriks. Like, they're trying to build them up. And it was, like you said, was not the right choice of the people for the Iron Savages to be losing to. Stop trying to sell me the Von Eriks. I was here for it for the first match that we got to see them in. But now I feel like, you know, uh, Caprice and uh, Ian are trying to just like overly sell me the Von Eriks and the movie. I'm like, I get yeah. it, guys. Stop making every comment a commercial trying to get these people over and the movie. Like, I, you know, I understand, but it's too much. Brian Keith should have carried this match for his side of the team because he, he was hardly in there at all. And he would have done so much better than most of what the Von Eriks did. Every time it was the Von Eriks and Jack Jameson, it was such a rough match. It was not great. No. And, you know, people want to say that they're new, but they've been wrestling since 2010. That's almost 14 years. Like, yeah. it's it's rough. Like, they should be working their way up. Wrestling some other small... Like, put them up against some local teams if you're trying to put them over in Texas. If they're going to stay in Ring of Honor, let them build up. Then they can wrestle against some other teams. But, no, having them beat the Iron Savages, this was such a bad choice. Such a rough match. It This was one of the low... This was the low point of the card for me. And it's been one of the lower points of matches that just... There was no reason for it to be this low. So, yeah, yeah this... So, something pinged, Mikey, when you were talking about earlier with the Iron Savages with Jack Jameson as well because of his stiffness and his inability to do stuff, like keep him in, in those three-person matches. He's the Rico to their billion shots. Oh, God, uh, yes. Rico could work. Yeah. Like, you can tell that Jack Jameson is a body man who can he's great on the mic let him talk but he wants to be a wrestler they want to make him a wrestler and he just he doesn't have that fluidity meanwhile you're wasting the two iron savages on this who are going nuts enjoying this ride and you know either make them more serious and get mad at them do something but don't waste them on this one and it's 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 sad to say it's a waste with the von erics because they do need to be that kind of pushover in this in this town if the von erics are getting the same kind of look outside of texas on the next couple of weeks we'll know that there's a, an extended push going on but i don't know how this is going to work i think we're kind of done with the von erics for a little bit because this was taped in texas still but i know that we're not going to be in texas anymore which you know is a thing that happened i think my biggest issue with all this too is not just on ring of honor but on aew as well I don't remember the last time the Iron Savages have won a match within the last two and a half months or so. Like, they would lose some, they would win some, which made me happy, but they've been on this continuous losing streak, and it just frustrates me because they're losing in Ring of Honor. They're literally being jobbed out on Collision half the time anyways. It's a very unfortunate because now what I'm afraid of is that come 2024 and whatever we see in Ring of Honor then... I'm afraid that Iron Savages is going to fall under the big boy comedic trope where they just get squashed after squashed after squashed. And then there's like no legitimacy. I was like, do we not remember that these boys actually can wrestle? Iron Savages can actually wrestle. They are funny, but they are also big boys that can throw people. And you can also have them do jumps and things like that. By the way, if anyone knows either of them, we'd love to talk to them about this, too, and kind of go over that stuff. Bronson Beefcake, you are always welcome on the came up with Titty City because that made me chuckle more than it should have. So many other things. But we move on from a sad ending, but comedic duo and all that stuff to Honestly, the opening line to this promo was hysterical. When this they talk was about amazing. Gr- Griffin Cole, Mama's Boys, without Mama, because she's with her actual family. Like, how <laughs> dare she go to her real children? We're her children. And Griff's like, I'm not having any of this. Right, big bro? No, yeah. No, oh my God, no. so good. I was just like, they're leaning into this. I am here for it. Yes. Like this is the kind of stupid that makes it work. I'm I'm gonna be controversial when I say this. If they continue to have Cole Carter just be this dumb and Griff Garrison be the straight man in this team, 
I actually may support <laughs> this tag team. They've won, they've won me over the last few months that Griff and Cole have been a tag team. I'm kind of like loving this. And when you Do- pair them against the likes of Spanish Announce Project too, <laughs> I was like, this is a goofy feud. All four of these guys are weird. Like they are so funny. At least Angelica Pentico are. I will also give shout out to Lexi because she made this even better towards the end too. But so good. This is what I want to see. Uh, I'll say like before Andrew, we get to this. I have to also say you can tell how much we're enjoying this. Mikey's used Cole Carter's full name. Like this isn't creating yeah. a wrestler twenty five anymore. This is Cole Carter. So just take it for what it is. Andrew, you laughed. You were you wanted to talk about this one earlier on before we got on here. Go I, to town. I got to hear this. So I, I did. It's the same things. I love this. I love how much Cole Carter is playing into it. And the parts that bother me are the parts that are supposed to bother me. And it's so perfect. That's what it's supposed to be. And, like, the way he ended, like, that whole, like, wait, 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 are we actually doing this now? What's happening? Like, so lost, so clueless. Should, should I get my gear on? Yeah. Do I have to wear gear? So good. But we move on from that wonderful promo. And having seen, uh, this is what I want to talk about here. We saw Lady Frost stuff here as we had uh, going on before, talking about more of what she's done in the past. She was in a tri- trio tag team with two other women who mm-hmm. she has no uh, no working with before, but it was Kira Hogan and it was Trisha Dora mm-hmm. taking on the Renegades and Taya Valkyrie. This trio worked. Yes. Listen, okay, I want to talk about appearances normally shouldn't be a thing because the entering talent matters most to me. But you cannot tell me they were all in black. Like the mm-hmm. theme song of Taya fits perfectly with this trio. And I was just like, did y'all? Until Charlotte tripped on Taya's coat on the way down. I was like, this was beautiful. And then when you go a little onto the other side too, I didn't know how Lady Frost, Trish, and Kiara were going to work together. They actually did pretty good. And Trish sold the heck out of Taya's finisher. And oh my God, that was brutal. By the way, that is the thumbnail for this when Trish has her pulling up and just Trish is like screaming and yelling. That is the thumbnail for this review. Also, give me more Lady Frost versus uh, versus Taya. Yes. Those two in that luchador style, yeah. but that heavy luchador style. Yeah. Ooh. yeah, this I love this. Like seeing them come out. My first response to this was like, yes, yes, yes. Taya and the Renegades is that let, let me see that faction. That's so good. And I think the more I watch this match, the more I realized how good this grouping is. Because first of all, like you said, they looked apart. They look like they should be together. They fit for her enforcers if she's going to be working for one of those women's titles. you know. And it makes sense with them being the only real women's tag team that they might work with someone like Taya. And we saw they worked really well in the ring together. They can do all that stuff. But outside of that, I think the two of them constantly working with Taya on the road and in the ring and in promos and all that stuff with someone with Taya's experience could be so good for the Renegades. It would be a lot like what I think Billy got out of working with Athena over this last year. So I think putting this group together, such a good idea. Let's see more of this because they fit perfectly in the ring together. And I think this could really develop another nice section of the women's division in ring of honor. Also take note, everybody in AEW commentary the way caprice and ian wove through the through line of maria not being there and the renegades needing to mm-hmm. bring someone in that can actually help them them making us care more about this match as we went along yes stokely saved stuff on aew last uh you know literally the night before mm-hmm. But he had to work through three commentators who do not care about women's wrestling at all. And you can tell this is where it goes above and beyond is that you have the support of the people around you. And they again, we say this. They are the best commentary team in the biz. That's all it is. I do want to. There was I love the fact that we got to see this. You're talking about the improvement of wrestling for the uh, Renegades. Yeah, we got to see that like pump handle flatliner thing from Robin. Which and was that, it, right? so, it so is as good. smooth as when Pete Dunn does it. That was amazing. Yeah, so good. And then that like Death Valley driver style, like into uh, Michinoku driver was just like, I love that we're like, oh, cool. They've got some signature moves. Like each one's got their little like pickup package into a driver kind of thing. Super cool. I like that we got that highlight from them. And now we just need to see their tag team finisher. Yes. And that's going to be like the best thing ever. Seriously. Uh, also, also smart on Taya and the way they call this too. When she rubbed her butt into Kira's face to keep in the corner there. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, that's a veteran move right there. Keeping her from yeah. getting away. I'm like, yeah, it is. <laughs> it's also just 
it's Taya. It's great. I love it so much. And I agree with you, JVL. That's the last point. I do want to see Lady Frost and Taya go at it because I keep forgetting. Yes, Lady Frost trained a lot in Mexico, too. But then I forget that Taya Valkyrie was trained by Pedro Aguayo, too. Like, right. I was like, I keep forgetting that this Canadian woman was trained mm-hmm. by yeah. one of the big stars in Lucha Libre. I was just like, also, I echo what the boys have said last week when we saw Taya and especially Jesse. Taya's theme song is always a banger. I always yeah. like get dancey every the time she enters better because they were with her too it made sense yes, it so it, good so we move on from there to i wanted this to be so good the people involved make me happy but we had a promo where layla and rachel are talking about they're going to be going for that roh tv championship and the fact that like you know we're up against maria layla's kind of stumbling over a lot of her talking points she's really not getting in there rachel's trying to help her out mercedes and diamante interrupt them to set up a tag match and Mercedes is trying to carry Diamante because Diamante is basically like a little dog yapping back and repeating everything said and then getting upset. And I've seen Diamante do better on the mic. She seems to have devolved and I'm worried about it. Yeah, this was a weird one for sure. I I feel like Andrew could relate to this a little bit and maybe you too, JVL. But right now, the way that Diamante carried herself and talked in this promo remind me, this remind me of like, so I, I'm, we, me and Andrew grew, 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 grew up in California. Like, grew up, right? So, like, Diamante reminds me of the, like, you have that little Cholita friend. Like, you have the homegirl, and then she has the little Cholita friend that you both kind of know, but, like, she's just, like, again, she's the hype woman. She will, like, hype both of you up. She's willing to scrap with anybody, but you need to keep and calm her down a little bit. Like full on Sharpie eyebrows and everything. Like hold my earrings. Like here I go. Yeah. I was like, her first instinct is to fight. There's no, mm-hmm. there's no, let's talk about it. Let's not smack talk her. It's zero to, I'm going to fight you right now. And I, that's exactly how Diamante was here. And I feel like she kind of stepped over Mercedes a little bit as Mercedes was trying to save this. I will say Diamante <laughs> probably was the worst between her and Layla because at least Rachel was able to kind of help her a little bit. Whereas yeah. Diamante, the little Jolita came out in her and Mercedes like, girl, calm down. Well, also, Layla, you can tell English is not her first language. So she's working on a disadvantage there as well. And Diamante, like, just she was trying too hard is, is what it ended up coming off as. It's not like she was hyping up. She was literally trying to just be a part of it. She was Pitbull out the gate. I was like, whoa, punt the brakes. But I'm looking forward to the match because uh, those four working together is going to be a hard hitting one that I'm really interested in. Andrew, how about you? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the backstage promo work has been rough from the beginning with the Rachel and Layla stuff. The Rachel. I Sorry. Yeah. Rachel and Layla stuff. I, I kind of want to see. I mean, it's been rough in the ring, too, with Maria. I think there's just been a lot of like not quite syncing up on things and so i can see where they're going with it Uh, i hope they do something smart at the outcome of this that benefits both of them you know and they're in a hard spot like learning at this level you're you know you're under the camera a lot so i think that's a big thing but i agree to these four wrestling each other is going to be awesome uh you know and it's great because it's a way for us to see, you know, anywhere between two to four of these people could be in this tournament that we're talking about. So, you know, it gives us a little like early sneak peek of like who could be facing who and how they might kind of fit up against each other. You know, I feel like if they're going to both be in it, obviously at some point we're going to see Layla and Rachel face each other. Yeah. But uh, I do have to say, and again, I think this says something about the promo, but I love the fact that uh, Rachel Ellering was wearing a a Griswold Christmas sweatshirt. That was so good. And then I noticed she had Grogu like uh, Christmas shorts on too. But the Griswold uh, sweatshirt that won it for me because that's that that is if I have to choose one, that's my Christmas movie. And so I'm like, all right, cool. Well, now Rachel Ellering, you're my favorite of the four. You won me over with that. There you go. She so. she got to you. She got mm-hmm. to you. That's all it took. Man. So we, we move on from there. We get to uh, Tony Nese in a squash match against local talent Joey Hyder. Mark Sterling doing his best to kind of hype this up, get it down there, and Sterling and you know Tony Nese coming out with a bad attitude in most of it. The one thing I did take away from this before we get to the review is, wow, they're letting Tony Nese do the Rikishi driver? I thought that was banned in most places because it's extremely dangerous, but he's doing a <laughs> pump handle Rikishi driver. That's hysterical. Sorry, I've broken both of them. Uh, this match, you know, it was what it was. I do like that he came out in, you know, know the the black tights and knee pads and everything came out in darker gear he looked a little more serious 
He looked like Shibata. Well, you know, Shibata left his gear back there, so he decided to change there it. Go, yeah. So I like that. I liked how it played out in the ring because, you know, his Rikishi driver. So I think uh, it was good. It was, I like to see him get a little adversity because we got to see him flare up a little bit with his attitude. And I hope that this is just another sign of him being his own man in a way from Ethan Page. And he gets to develop more into this this kind of like new Tony niece. I think the funniest bit to me, and this is just random of how disappointed Caprice was, is like, no more group trading. I was just right, like, right. I was like, wow. I was like, you're kind of right, Caprice. I thought this was, you know, it served its purpose for me. We're finally moving Tony niece away from his feud with Ethan Page. And I do appreciate that he's getting a little more darker in terms of appearance and being a little more hard hitting. I I don't want to agree with JBL here is like he's channeling his inner strip, which is really weird. I did find something interesting, though, and I'm hoping that there may be some follow up to this. But Ian and Caprice did mention, you know, Josh Woods during this match as well. Mm-hmm. I was just like, oh, yeah, whatever happened to Josh? I was like, did we forget <laughs> about him? I don't know. I want Josh back on my television screen. Yes. I've missed him. We need him back. Listen, he Josh needs to break we- Wheeler Yuta. He needs to break him in half. I need this match to happen once again because since Shibata is going to be out because of, you know, making sure that his head is going to be okay because that's why he hasn't been on television and Wheeler won the title is because doctors needed to see Shibata to make sure everything was good. Speedy recovery to Shibata. Hope to see you soon. Very much so. This, so, yeah, we, this, yeah, this was fine. This was serviceable. We, I enjoyed it for what it was. Yeah, it was a squatch. That's what we got. But we didn't get a squatch next. We got a very good match. This was yes. my match of the night. Vert Vixen is climbing up and showcasing how much she not only can sell for everyone else, but play that. It's, it's basically what Chris Statler and Chris yeah. Statler wishes her gimmick before she changed over to this used to be. Mm-hmm. It's fun. It's funny. And it's also very, very powerful. And Billy Starks. I, I will watch her go all day. Her Swanton bomb, which she didn't pull off the first time, which I love, you know, she had to work for it was yeah. ridiculous. And then she's going full dark mode afterwards. She's beating the crap out of everyone. Athena's rubbing off on her. And that's sold by Ian and Caprice. Gentlemen, tell me why I'm wrong. that This is the match of the night here. Cause you guys liked a different one. I mean, my match of the night was actually a different match than both of your match of the, oh. the next match that's coming up. But we're talking about by like decimal points of points here. So, no, I love this match. Uh, I thought it was interesting to see Billy come out on her own, but the way that she came out like, uh, no, no, don't worry about getting up, but the, I, I got this handled. And she just walked out there with so much confidence, but she still had that like playfulness, which yeah. I'm loving to see see from Billy. Um, I liked that early on we got to see some of Billy's actual like grappling skills against Vert Vixen. And I would love to see Vert Vixen more. I hope when they leave Texas that she's going to be someone that they might continue to keep on their roster. Uh, I she think had, she's a she great... had an entrance. She had an yeah. actual entrance. So. Yeah. So I, I hope that we get to see more of her. I think she's a great addition, especially with now two women's titles. Uh, she does uh, definitely have that like size and style of a Chris Statlander. Uh, which I think will play really well with a lot of the other uh, competitors in Ring of Honor. And I did really like how they did the readjust for the Swanton Bomb for Billy because the setup move that she did didn't quite get Vert Vixen in the right spot. So we did an actual work to get the thing set up to where then she was in the right spot instead of Vert Vixen basically doing the weird flop around on the ground until I get into the right spot you know, so my opponent can hit me in a move. And one of the little nuances that I really loved in this was uh, when Billy put out her hand to uh, shake Vert Vixen's hand at the end of the match, she also had her hand behind her back with her fingers crossed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So good. Loving it, it. I love it, too. And again, as far as the match goes, both of you have already said most of my points, too. I really enjoy Vert Vixen, and I do hope that Ring of Honor continues to have her on there. I will say this again, like I said during the final battle review, what I love about this 2.0 version of Billy Starks, if you will, it's, again, like small changes in her attitude definitely go a long way. And it's one of those things where you don't have to have a grand turnaround in character in order to you know add nuance and depth to their character and what i appreciate too as i said this during the final battle review is is that this version of billy starks is giving me a whimsy of the original alice in wonderland 
But then there's a twinge of the American McGee version, if anyone has played those versions of Alice in Wonderland, mm-hmm. where it's more of a twisted but still playful and whimsical version of it. And like you oh, yeah. said, Andrew, just the crossing of the fingers after the match, before the beatdown. And even in the beatdown, it was still vicious, but it's still playful with yep. it. And I'm like, if this is the Billy Starks we're getting under Athena's tutelage, I am super here for it. I This match was also really close for me to pick my match <laughs> of the night, but I had to go with the six woman tag because just the Renegades really pushed the extra point for me over because of how much they improved for me but this was amazing i can't wait to see billy tear it up in the tournament for the women's television championship whenever that happens the matches that we're getting between who we have so far is going to be phenomenal it is and you know th- this is again proved in that women's wrestling is kind of saving the industry at this point it's really taking it where it needs to be kind of like kyle fletcher was saved in his very boilerplate <laughs> promo by Willie Mack accepting his open challenge. I'm happy we have open challenges for the TV title. I'm happy yes, that yes, Lexi yes. Nair is giving him the googly eyes as he's talking to him because he's so much taller than she is. But man, dude, that was just like, you hit every beat on your beat sheet. You said the words, but you didn't believe a damn thing you said. I, it was so weird. It's almost like some of these promos tonight felt like they were like surprising them. Like they found them in the hall and they were like, here's a promo. Okay, go. And they was just like, oh, uh, okay, read my lines. And the ones that could go with that did a good job. Some of the other ones just couldn't hang with it at that point. And this promo was so awkward, but open challenges. I love it. I think it's a good build for him. This could do very much for Kyle Fletcher being the TV champion, what they did with uh, Orange Cassidy and the Intercon or Inter, uh, the international International. championship in AEW, and he's definitely on that level where he can carry it too he's very much that type of wrestler i 100 percent agree i think my issue with this whole promo is is that i didn't necessarily hate it i do agree in the sense that when kyle fletcher spoke for his part of this promo it was beat for beat whatever he was told that he needed to hit for this i think kyle fletcher does better in promos if he's in one or two situations Number one, you put him in a promo where he needs to speak more from the heart because when he and, you know, Mark Davis cut that promo before the match against FTR at all out, like that was perfect because it's hinting on the talking about their legacy, how much they've worked together, what true tag team wrestling is. That was great. I think the other thing is, too, I feel like this is an AEW style promo. I feel Uh, like they should have let Kyle Fletcher channel his United Empire persona promo skills. Let them speak the way they do in New Japan because that's more rough and tough and more intimidating. This was like a watered down version. I love Willie Mack. I'm excited for this match, but he also kind of fumbled the bag, so to speak, because he tried to save this. But I'm like, Willie, I loved you, but this is the same problem we had when you were over in Impact. You or you never go no. full of the Mac. No. Yeah. So so we we had that set up there. We have the match set up for next week, which I'm looking forward to as well. But then we come to our main event, which was Andrew, as you said, your match of the night, Johnny TV taking on all ego Ethan Page, and you know while the match was amazing, and we'll go into pieces of it the ending was the reason to be there because now we're getting our stuff back there, but I'll let you guys talk about the match before we get to that, including Johnny TV's new over the top T V pose. Like what the hell is this? I, I love this. I love both these, uh, these two wrestlers before I got to see them here in ring of honor, or AEW or anything like that. Like, so I'm just happy for them to be getting to be at points like this. So getting to see them wrestle each other was super awesome to see. I thought it was also a really interesting mix of styles because obviously you look at Johnny TV, no doubt he's in really great shape, very muscular, but the way he moves is just so unique. There's so many times that I watched him move that it was like he was getting up off the ground, grabbing a rope. And I was like, oh, it's such a like slow look. Of, like he's getting up so slowly. That's so weird. But then suddenly, like halfway through the movement, he's changing directions and he's outside the ring and it just happens so smoothly. But he's so unique in that movement style and how he moves throughout the match. He just brings that fluidity. And then Ethan Page, especially now, he's really built into this like surprisingly powerful wrestler. So to get to see them wrestle against each other was like not the styles you might expect just from seeing them. 
But then the styles together were an interesting mix, and I thought they did a really great job. I enjoyed the, this was my match, then I just really enjoyed the two different styles and the way they got uh, through their moments. But bringing in Dalton Castle was super good. I enjoyed that. I love getting to see this story because I feel like it enabled the ending to happen to where Johnny TV, Dalton Castle, all that stuff keeps forward momentum and Ethan page also keeps forward momentum on his stuff outside of this story. And so I thought that was really good. And I hope that we continue on this, especially with Ethan page and uh, men of the year, Mm -hmm. all that stuff, more stories because they could do these stories just like they did the Billy Starks, Athena stuff. Keep building those stories up. I I think we've got some really great stuff here. This, this match was awesome. And I loved how it just kept rolling along. I Jonathan television. Can I just tell you, as somebody who has been following Johnny, insert name, Mm -hmm. wherever he goes here and his career, it made me so happy to be reverting back to a 10 year old to get to see the starship pain once again. And it's still one of my favorite moves ever from any wrestler. And that's what made me fall in love with Johnny TV here. I really enjoyed this match. (laughs) Yes. Before you jump in, did, did you hear the call Caprice gave on that when he was interrupted? He called it Painus Interruptus. I was like, yes, <laughs> yes. Oh, that's so good. That is why Ian and Caprice are the best commentators. And anyone can at me in the comments and on social media. I will fight you to the death to prove me wrong. But man, again, Starship Pain, watching that is great. I love that. And this is what I wanted forever. Johnny TV. Well, I mean, we kind of had to pull him away since a certain QT Marshall is no longer in the company but honestly it's a blessing in disguise for Mm -hmm, both him mm -hmm. and taya because we get mr and mrs tv in ring of honor and i love it anytime a wrestling company allows the actual husband and wife duo of taya and johnny to work together because it is always ridiculous but their wrestling skills back it up yeah and honestly i love that we're finally continuing to get ethan page some wins now because leading into mm-hmm. the ma- i quit match against tony niece at final battle ethan lost a little bit of steam for losing a couple matches via distractions but i'm happy that ethan page won here i yeah. think i'm with andrew where i want to see you know eventually him and like ethan page more and i would love to see more of scorpio sky and men of the year uh-huh. this was great but of course we'll get into the ending but as far as the match goes starship pain was great honestly i know ethan page can go and he's great but watching just the amazing style of johnny tv not only starship pain but just the amount of times he had ethan in the corner and found different ways to jump off the ropes and twist his body yeah. in directions that shouldn't be humanly possible never was just a beautiful thing i wonder if he's also teaching lady frost that because she also jumped off the rope and like contorted her body when she came down he's doing it was yeah. beautiful but now let's talk about the real reason why we're all here because everyone's dalton favorite castle. theater kid dalton, dalton castle. castle dalton's music hits he interrupts johnny like he was interrupted last week the boys don't even get to have the fans up for long enough because dalton just pushes it out of the way he's looking haggard he's still not sleeping and that smile when Johnny television loses and Dalton's just like, that's right. I'm the true television champ. I just, I want that as like gift for the rest of my life. Johnny yeah. TV's face too, looking at Dalton castle. Like the kid is like, Oh, you just ruined this audition for me. I'm coming for you. And we must have a theater kid battle, which is literally what this feud is. It's the battle of the theater kids. And I love it's it. It's the theater kid versus the dancing kid. Oh, it, it's it's theater kid versus the broadcast kid because it's television. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So good. I'm ready for this, this bring, feud. Bring me back for more. I want to see it every yeah. week. Seriously. Absolutely. All right, gentlemen. So that was Ring of Honor for the last time in 2023. We are no longer going to be in this year. I want your last and final of 2023 empanada ratings. Give them <sighs> to me. Let's hear them. All right, I'll go first. I uh, I feel bad because this is the last you know rating of the year. So this got a six point eight for me. There were some really high points for it, but this part of it played into the where I said this card felt light. It mm-hmm. felt like there were some areas where I was like oh, there wasn't really much to it. There wasn't much substance to it. There were some really fun spots, some really good information spots, some spots that even though felt light gave me some positivity for the future. And then that. Uh, six man tag match with Iron Savages that hurt a lot because that uh, was ranked really low for me. And so that really hurt the overall ranking. But we had three phenomenal matches in this. So still overall really good. 
And I think we're getting some good indications that they're looking at really working with some of this phenomenal talent that they have going into 2024. See, I can see where you're coming from. And normally I would be inclined to agree. I'm actually going to go in the opposite direction. I think as far as in-ring technical wrestling, I feel that while certain matches did give me what I want, like some examples, Nyla just destroying her opponent in a fun way. Zack Knight impressing the hell out of me and making me a fan immediately. Billy continuing to be amazing. I do agree that the six-man tag team kind of really brought it down for me because it was just clunky. And I feel, again, the wrong people won in this match. And I feel bad because Brian Keith got like no screen time in that match, which was really weird. But as far as the episode goes, because I also take my biggest points come from developing a story alliance and feuds and things like that, giving the writer's perspective. I'm actually going to give this a little bit more points. I'm going to give this an eight out of ten because while the wrestling was good to OK to why did I watch this? I feel that Ring of Honor is the only company that continues to build new feuds and does it very well and gives me a variety. It's like a it's like a charcuterie board of storylines. You have your more serious feuds. You have the comedy feuds. You have tournament arcs that are about to happen like a good old fashioned anime. Like this is everything that I want. And so for that, I give eight out of ten storylines are being developed. Feuds are being set and 2024 because we have three months until Supercard of Honor, because that always happens around this March, April, whenever to compete with, you know, the other promotions that are having their super events. Then eight out of 10 for me. I thoroughly enjoyed myself and I'm going to be looking for some of that Billy Starks uh, Sailor Moon shirt of hers, as well as to see if I can find any merch on Zack Knight because he made me a fan immediately. Nice. I am going to go basically along the same lines with about six to six and a half for this. Mostly because, yeah, the only down really for me was that six man tag. It was a good way to end the year. It got me excited. And honestly, Ring of Honor is going to keep my attention the entire rest of the year. I know it and I feel it in my bones. Gentlemen, I have had a blast with you over this entire year, getting to know Ring of Honor with you from when you joined and when you weren't here, but everything else. I know I'm going to want to continue to watch it, even if I'm not reviewing it going forward, because we are going to have a bit of a shakeup here at the Biconics with different people reviewing different things. But I, I put my hands into you. Thank you for an amazing final review. And thank you, all you Biconics fans growing every day for keeping here with us and supporting a wrestling show that really is keeping up that end of the bargain that maybe the bigger shows haven't been doing and really has kept us loving this art form as much as we have. 